NMAP's been around forever, 25 years now, I think. Yeah, 25 years. About 1998 and 97 is when it first came out. And it's still great. It's still a great tool. It's an essential tool. And so one of the things we want to do is just type NMAP and then just do N-H to see all of the options. There's a lot of options. I'm going to expand this and so if we can see all of the help screen. So I just opened it up for the help screen to show you there's just lots and lots of options. And sometimes this can be overwhelming to the newcomer. But in reality, NMAP is pretty simple. All right. So let's see if we can't get and just boil it down to real simple terms of what how to work with NMAP. So lots of options. If you want to go ahead and scan, now what this tool does in its most basic form is it is going to tell you first, is the target system online? That's the first thing. So the first thing it does is it sends an ICMP, a ping, to the target and waits to see whether or not that ping came back. If it comes back, it will then begin to scan the top 1,000, not the first 1,000, but the top 1,000 ports, right? Why ports? Ports represent a service. It's where a service connects to the internet. So for instance, we know HTTP is on port 80 usually, right? By default, it's on port 80. So if we see port 80 open on a system, we know that HTTP is running on that system. Why is that important? Because there, if we want to attack HTTP, first thing we gotta know is whether or not it's actually running. And not every system has port 80 open on it. If we're trying to attack, for instance, SMB, that's port 445, we would check to see whether or not that system has, has port 445 open at it. If it is, then we can begin to explore the possibilities of attacking it. So the first thing you want to know is what ports are open on that system. And this is how we do it. Real simple. NMAP, okay, then dash S. That's scan. Now, the next step is the type of scan. And there's many types of scan you can do with NMAP. But really, the most basic and probably the most important is a T-scan. A T-scan is simply a TCP scan, which means that it creates a three-way handshake with the target system. We know that to create any type of TCP connection to a target, whether it be your, your web server, website, what have you, it has to first create a three-way handshake. That's the most reliable type of scan. So we can do that with a T. And then we just got to give it the IP address. That's all we have to do. So all that, all these other options that are out there, right, we can ignore them for right now and simply go 192, 168, 107. Uh, I forgot the IP address. Let's go back. <laughs> 107, 136. Okay. Dot 136. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and run a scan and see what ports are open on that system. Let's do that and hit enter. And if it's up, okay, if it's, there's a couple of things I want to kind of mention. If it's down, it'll come back and tell us that it's not online. But also remember that a lot of uh, network engineers will drop ICMP. They will not allow ICMP to return. So if you ping a machine, rather than allowing ICMP to echo reply, so ICMP is defined by echo request, okay, that's us asking for an answer, and then echo reply, right, which is the system coming back and answering us. A good network engineer who's security conscious oftentimes will simply not allow the system to reply because it's a way of hiding. It's a way of hiding the, the host, right? Not make it easy for the hacker. In that case, if that's the case, NMAP will just come back and say, oh, it doesn't exist because it won't start scanning until he, it knows the system is actually online. And I'll show you how to get past that in just a sec. So NMAP ST, right, TCP scan, and then hit enter. I think you need to put your 136 on the end. I wasn't sure if you actually had typed this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got talking and I forgot the bad, the last octet. And then we hit enter. And we start scanning and it says, all right, it says host is up. Okay, it tells us host is up. All 1000 scan ports are ignored states. 
Okay, so what we can do now is just go back over to our dragon and let's start a Apache server. I think there's Apache on the system. So we'll go sudo service Apache 2 start. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the old terminology. You know, using the services, we can now use system control. Both of them will work on most Linuxes now. So I've started the Apache server to check to see whether the Apache server is running. I go ps dash aux and then grep. Okay, Apache two. This will show me whether or not the Apache two system Apache two is running. Apache two, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is the world's most popular web server. Been around for thirty years now, and you can see that it's running over here. So I just use the the PS, right, which is the pro the processes, and then the AUX switches, and then I grep, which is a filter for Apache 2, all right? So I know it's running. Now I can go back to my Kali Linux, and I'll scan again, and let's go and run it again, and let's see what happens. And there it is. Yeah. HTTP is running. Now, that's really helpful. We know that port 80 is open. But we don't really know what the service is behind it, right? We know that 80 is open, and by default, that means it's HTTP. But what type of HT, What type of web server is it? Is it IIS? Is it Apache 2? Is it Nginx? Is it you know all of the all of the various types of web servers? We can find that out by adding one simple switch, okay, to Nmap events dash a and then go dash a it takes a little bit longer because what's doing now is it's probing it's sending out probes to every one of the ports that it finds open in this case it only finds one and it's probing to determine what is actually running behind it and you see it came back with a lot of information it came back and told us that one it's it's ubuntu is the operating system right and it came back and said it's apache 2 and it actually read the, the default page and said so it worked, which is the default page on Apache. If you haven't seen it before, you can go to we'll go here, open up a browser on the system. And if we go localhost, which will take us to our Apache server on our system, there it is. It works. So this is the default page. So it's reading that and coming back uh, and telling us that. So a lot more information. We can also, if we just wanted to test for a single port, we can do dash P and then the port number. Right? Much quicker, simpler, all right, to do that. And it doesn't have to go through all the other ports. There it is. Okay, works great. Now, one of the things that a lot of people are new uh, to Nmap and some of the ethical hacking books and classes will tell you to do is to do a an SS scan because that's a stealthy scan. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. right. You laugh and I laugh. It's not really very stealthy because the only difference between the TCP scan and the what they call a SYN scan or a stealthy scan is it doesn't complete the three-way handshake. Your IP address is still going to be attached to all those packets. All right, So it's not like you're really getting past anything at all. So I think it really isn't worth doing that but to each their own. And so that's one of the, you know, uh, what I think is kind of a, and it sometimes not give you as good a result. Usually it'll give you about the same results as the T-scan, but it really isn't stealthy because the packets still have your IP address exactly. on it. The big, the, the big, the only difference is that the web server will not log a successful connection. That's the difference, right? So. That's Nmap. I think you need to know Nmap. You know, it's one of those essential tools. It's the first step of active reconnaissance. The first step of active reconnaissance on any system.